In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the value of Q and K to predict the direction of a reaction in equilibrium. We're going to be using this reaction as our example, and we have the equilibrium constant for this reaction. And we're being given some concentrations of all three of the molecules in this reaction, and we're being asked to predict which direction the reaction proceeds in order to get itself to equilibrium. To solve problems like this, we always need to write and use an equilibrium expression. Remember, equilibrium expressions are the concentrations of the products over the concentrations of the reactants, each one raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. So for this particular problem, we're looking at the concentration of HI squared. HI is our product. Um, the coefficient is 2, so it's being raised to the 2. HI squared over H squared times I squared. Now, if this system is in equilibrium, when we plug in the concentration of HI, the concentration of H2, and the concentration of I2, and we do the math on this, if it is in equilibrium, we're going to get 54.3, the value of the equilibrium constant. That's what it means mathematically for this to be in equilibrium. If this is not in equilibrium, when we plug these numbers in, we're going to get something other than 54.3. Maybe it's bigger, maybe it's smaller. It's just, in general, it's going to be a different number. When we get this different number, something other than 54.3, because it is not the equilibrium constant, we refer to it as Q. So I'm just going to kind of slide this over, and we're going to write in here that we are calculating right here a Q. Uh, we're plugging these numbers in for the concentrations. We're going to do the math, and we're going to get some number, and it's not going to be KC, and we've got to call it something, so we're just going to be calling it Q. Let's begin by plugging these numbers in and see what we get. So for the concentration of HI, the problem tells us that that value is 1.27. Do not forget that we need to square it because of the stoichiometric coefficient is 2. And then the concentration of H2, the problem tells us is 0 0.50. And I2, the concentration of that is 0.87. We plug all of these in, do the math, and we end up with a value of 3.7. So the value of Q is 3.7, and like I said, is not the same as K. So this number that we get here is not 54.3. That just simply means that this system is not in equilibrium. So Q is 3.7, K for this is 54.3, and because Q is not equal to K, the system is not in equilibrium which we already expected based on the wording of the problem. So the next question that we're being asked to figure out then is which direction does the reaction proceed to actually get itself to equilibrium? In order to get itself to equilibrium, it's going to need to change the concentrations of HI, H2, and I2, change the numerical values in order to get this number all the way up to 54.3, the value of the equilibrium constant. So mathematically, what do we need to do to these numbers to get this 3.7 higher up to 54.3. Well, this is just a simple fraction, so we can apply what we know about fractions to help us make this prediction. 3.7 is too small. Like we know in this case we have a Q that is less than K, whether it's a KC, a KP, a K, whatever. We have a Q that is less than K. This number is too small. This is because our numerator is too small, and our denominator is too large. Just thinking about what we know about fractions. If the numerator is too small and the denominator is too large, this number is ultimately going to be too small as well. If we increase the value of our numerator, if we make this a larger number, that's going to cause this number to go up as well. Also, if we were to make these smaller numbers because of the inverse relationship here, if these numbers get smaller, this number gets bigger as well. So if Q is too small, what we need to do is increase our numerator. Our numerator is, in this case, HI. No matter what, our numerator is always corresponding to our product. So if Q is too small, and this just simply means that our system, our reaction, needs more products. We need to increase the concentration of our product molecules. We need this number to get larger, 
so that this number can get larger as well. And how do we go about getting more products? Well, this what the system will do is increase the rate of the left to right reaction. So it's gonna speed up the left to right reaction, which will increase the amount of HI. It also has the added bonus of decreasing the amounts of our reactants, which will also help to increase the value of Q. If the system needs more products, it's going to accomplish that by um, increasing the rate of the reaction in the left to right direction. And we refer to this as the reaction or the system shifting to the right, to the direction of the products. Now let's imagine if we had the opposite situation. So let's imagine if our Q was greater than K, which is not the case here, but we can imagine if that was the case. Let's imagine that this number was 103.7. So this number is too big. Um, if the number is larger than K, if it's too big, then what we need to do is decrease the amount of products or increase the amount of reactants. So if Q is larger than K, this just means that the system needs less product or more reactant, however you want to think about it. It needs less product. We need to get rid of some of the HI in this case, which means that the system is going to speed up the rate of the backwards reaction. It's going to increase this reaction. And in this case, we say that the system shifts to the left or the reaction shifts to the left.